Sesim Bank is a browser-based banking and financial services and product simulation designed to develop participants' understanding of the key sales and support functions of a bank and their interaction, and raise awareness of the current banking operating environment. Each team will undertake the role as the new management of a bank with several front and back office operations in a single geographical market. In the role of a bank manager, the teams will be responsible for consumer and business clients, lending and borrowing, front office and back office, and customers with deposits, mortgages, and other credit products and investments. They'll have personnel to manage, IT systems to maintain and develop, risk metrics to keep in check, regulators to report to, and capital markets to raise financing from, provided that they are pleased with the way the bank is managed. Some of the concepts the teams will have to incorporate into their strategy include pricing of credit and deposit products, balancing risks and the growth of the balance sheet, solvency regulation, segmentation, credit impairments, launch of new investment products, and timing and scale of IT investments. Each simulation market consists of 2 to 12 competing teams with up to 8 members in each. The number of parallel simulation markets is not limited, making it possible to utilize the simulation for any number of students in the class. The simulation is played over 2 to 12 rounds, with each round con constituting one fiscal year. Practice rounds that do not influence the actual game may be played before the actual rounds. In Sassim Bank, all teams begin from the exact same competitive position and face the exact same market forces. Teams compete only against the other teams in their own market, not against the computer, so each team's decisions influence their competitors' results and the market development overall. The simulation offers a wealth of customization options for the widest array of use cases and optimal implementation. The simulation can be deployed in a very basic configuration to allow for concentration on the core issues in consumer banking. On the other hand, the simulation can be used in a more complex setting that requires much more from the participants. The essence of the simulation is to closely resemble a modern banking environment, tie together multiple business concepts and disciplines, and allow for the successful execution of alternative strategies. The simulation is designed to reward those who can best identify underlying trends, success factors, changes in competitive situation, and successfully formulate and adjust a winning strategy. The key learning goals of the simulation game are to increase participants' awareness of the current banking environment, to develop capabilities in identifying and analyzing core issues and trends in banking, and the differences between banks and financial institutions on the one hand, and industrial and service companies on the other. To illustrate core issues and decision-making in the financial sector in a far more engaging way, and to provide practical experience in teamwork and problem solving, and to excite competitive spirits in a dynamically evolving marketplace. The Sesim Bank Simulation user interface is structured as follows. The home page has general info about the course and team, plus upcoming deadlines and some basic information about the course. All decisions are made under the Decisions section. Results become visible in this area immediately after each deadline, and are available to download as an Excel file. Previous rounds results remain visible throughout the course of the game. The simulation schedule is available on this page. The schedule page presents deadlines for registration and also the actual rounds. These deadlines are set by the instructor and can be modified during the simulation if needed. Teams and team members in your market can be viewed here. Teams can change their company name, create a slogan, enter a description, and embed a video if they wish. There are two separate discussion forums built into the simulation, one for the whole course and one for each individual team. Any posts in a team forum are visible only to members of that team. Readings contain decision-making instructions and a case description. The instructor can also make course materials available through this section. The decision-making instructions cover all the available decisions in the simulation and some of the key issues to be considered, while the case description gives some additional information on the current competitive situation and potential market trends. This is a good starting point for the simulation. 
After reading the decision-making guide and case description, the students should read the market outlook in order to take into account general economic and industry trends. Having familiarized oneself with the relevant course materials, competitive position, and the likely development of key trends, it is time to proceed with the actual decision-making. Consumer banking includes the basic bank services and products offered to households, such as mortgage loans, consumer loans, point-of-sale credit, credit cards, cash credit, demand, and fixed-term deposits, and commission-based insurance and pension products. The exact assortment of products available in your simulation course is at the instructor's discretion. The deposits page covers both demand deposits that can be withdrawn from the bank at any time, as well as fixed-term time deposits in both shorter and longer time periods where customers commit to keeping the funds without the ability to withdraw them at will. Participants need to decide appropriate average interest offers for their customers for all available products and for both segments. For the ease of decision making, previous round decisions, market averages, total deposit and interest cost amounts for current and previous rounds are provided. The Credit Products page covers the multitude of loan products the bank offers to its customer base through its sales channels such as mortgages for house purchases, consumer loans, and credit cards. There are two types of decisions to be made. Firstly, the participants need to price the credit products by setting a margin on top of the reference rate for all products and for both segments separately. Secondly, Participants must decide appropriate lending terms that greatly affect the risk of the resulting loan book. There are multiple different types of terms to be set. For mortgage loans, participants must choose appropriate expense to income and loan-to-value ratios, as well as maximum maturity for the loans they are willing to extend to customers. The third part of the credit products page is the credit impairments table, which allows for the estimation of bad credit on an aggregate level. Estimation options are provided for loan loss provisions and net charge-offs. Business customers in Sassin Bank Simulation are divided into small and medium-sized enterprise customers and corporate clients, and both of these segments are optional. SME banking consists of offering customer banking services such as loans, deposits, and other services to small and medium-sized enterprise customers. Customers are categorized chiefly according to their credit rating, which is an overall estimate of the customer's creditworthiness. Participants need to decide the interest paid on deposits, loan margins charged separately for each credit rating class, strictness of lending terms separately for real estate projects and for all other customers, and competitive positioning in terms of service offering and industry orientation. Corporate banking forms the second part of business customers. This segment includes the largest corporate clients who are only offered advisory services. These are four types of services, equity capital market transactions, debt capital market transactions, mergers and acquisitions advisory, and general financial advisory. Fees for the first three are priced as a share of the total value of the customer transaction, and the fourth service is priced as an hourly charge. Participants also have the option to prioritize certain products with the result of increased product competence and better competitive position. In addition to traditional banking services such as deposits and consumer credit, the customers in Sessim Bank Simulation can be offered a wide range of investment services and products. This part of the simulation is completely optional and can be included in a multitude of configurations. The services side presents an overview of the three customer segments where the first two are the same as in banking, the second one having a broader access to services, and the third segment is specific to investment services. Investment services consist of personal portfolio management service offered to the last two customer segments, and it is a sales channel for the bank's investment products that are sold to all available customer segments. The product side to investments primarily consists of investment fund products. There are three established investment funds for which only pricing and outsourcing decisions need to be made. Furthermore, the participants have the option to create new funds to be offered to their clientele. This involves a process of choosing the class 
and potential subclass as well as geographical target market for the fund in addition to the pricing and outsourcing decisions. Personnel management forms the first back office function of your bank. It is responsible for resourcing, compensation, training and engagement. Firstly, teams must decide an appropriate personnel levels at each of the bank's departments. Teams are able to either hire or lay off people according to their individual strategies. Secondly, teams must decide on a set of personnel management policies related to compensation, training and engagement. Compensation is a combination of base pay and incentive pay policies. Base pay can be set at five different levels, whereas incentive pay offers a chance of preset options and freely set profit share based options. Training policies consist of choosing appropriate priority areas for personnel development to address possible problem spots and time-based budgets separately for new and old employees. The time spent on training is directly away from the other value-adding activities and carries a certain cost, but it also contributes to personnel competence, thus making future sales efforts that much better. Lastly, teams have the option to affect their bank's policy on personnel engagement and HR development. The options range from minimal engagement to making it a top priority at the bank. Extra expenditures here come at cost of both time and money, but contribute to better management, lesser turnover, and more satisfied personnel. Systems and processes form the second back office function of your bank. The participants have the option to invest in the development of internet banking services and customer service processes as well as to choose an appropriate policy for investing in new and maintaining current IT infrastructure. Extensive investments in these areas lead to higher levels of customer satisfaction and demand across the bank's product and service portfolio. Risk management forms the third back office function of your bank. It is a separate unit responsible for implementing risk management systems, risk-related reporting to relevant stakeholders, overdue credit management, and interest rate risk management. Risk management is an optional module in the simulation, and as such it can be included in full, without interest rate risk management, or excluded completely. Firstly, the participants need to decide the overall risk management budget. It is used to cover all risk management-related activities. Secondly, an adequate amount of people should be allocated to handle overdue credit management. Ample resources here reduce losses from non-performing customer loans. In addition, the risk management page includes a breakdown of the bank's risk-weighted assets position and the required amounts of capital according to international regulatory standards. The Treasury Department forms the last part of the bank's back office functions. The background for the Treasury page is the bank's balance sheet and the available decisions are located close to the relevant sections. Participants need to make decisions about funding the bank, investing its assets, and distributing its profits back to shareholders. The bank can be funded by issuing new shares or long-term or subordinated bonds. In case there is a funding shortfall, the bank will first try to cover the gap by borrowing in the interbank market. On the asset side of the balance sheet, the participants can affect the share of total assets invested into long-term bonds and interbank instruments issued by other banks. The more participants are willing to commit funds to the interbank market, the better access each bank will have to this source of funding. Lastly, the participants have the option to distribute funds back to the shareholders either by declaring dividends or by buying back shares. The profit distribution is limited by the accumulation of profits from previous rounds and regulatory capital standards. Throughout the decision-making interface, participants have access to an anchor menu providing continuously updated figures based on the decisions and estimates made so far. The anchor menu consists of income statements, balance sheet, loan book, and a set of key parameters. The reports include previous round results and budgeted figures for the current round. Although not a true indicator of coming results, this provides teams with a base set of results they can analyze to evaluate the decisions they have made so far. Sessim Bank Simulation provides each team member with their own decision-making area that is accessed by their unique login details. Thus each member is able to work independently and come up with decisions and a potential strategy for the team if they wish. 
Team members are then able to cooperate and collaborate here using the Decision Checklist page where all team members' decisions can be seen side by side. By pressing Copy, a team member's decisions is moved to the Team Decision column. At the deadline, the system reads the decisions from the Team Decision column and calculates the results for the round. Team decisions can be edited directly by pressing Go in the Team column. In addition, any team member can access the other team member's decisions area by pressing Go in the respective column and import another team member's decisions to their own area by pressing Import. After each round, the system generates a collection of reports for teams to analyze their performance. The reports become available immediately after the deadline passes unless otherwise chosen by the instructor. The results section presentation approximately follows the decisions interface. It includes all the relevant product and operational level data, as well as financial reports, financial ratios, and industry aggregate level data that are required for in-depth analysis of market development. The first page of the results section provides a series of most important data points in graphical form for quickly benchmarking the teams. The following pages provide much more detailed information. The income statement and balance sheet are located under the financial tab. There, the participants can find a detailed account of how the competing banks are earning their bottom line and how they fund their operations. Alongside financial statements, there is a long list of key performance metrics on the ratios, as well as details about how financial markets are valuing the company available on their valuation. The various reports give vital information for teams looking to adjust their strategy and improve their performance. Every team should analyze the results by comparing their team's results against their competitors and try to identify winning and losing strategies and decisions and then revise their strategy if necessary. The teams can be benchmarked in a variety of metrics and while we endorse using cumulative total shareholder return, choosing the winning criteria is left to the instructor's discretion. Anything from customer and personnel satisfaction to net interest margins and cost to income ratios are available. Results can be downloaded to a spreadsheet for further analysis by clicking Download, and the printer-friendly version can be accessed using the printable button. A slideshow of results can be accessed here, and includes an array of charts and graphs detailing various aspects of the team's performance.